In this video, we'll talk about mumps virus. So mumps virus is a very contagious virus which can cause the infection known as mumps. So mumps is caused by a paramyxovirus and its transmission primarily happens via rep respiratory droplets which often occurs during coughing or sneezing and it can also happen when you directly touch or come in contact with the saliva or respiratory sec secretions. The incubation period is typically 16 to 18 days but even can last till 25 days. Hallmark of this infection is swelling of the salivary glands, mostly the parotid glands and that too in a asymmetric manner. That means in one side the parotid glands would be swollen. Let us look at the virus and try to understand its different components. So this is an enveloped virus which has nucleocapsid protein and the genomic material is single stranded RNA which is negative sense. There are polymerases, phosphoproteins, matrix proteins, fusion and hemagglutinin. Among them hemagglutinin protein is really important because this helps the virus to dock onto a cell and this docking followed by fusion protein help it to fuse with the membrane and thereby the virus entry happens inside the cell. Since we already mentioned that this virus generally spreads via respiratory droplet, we would know how the mechanism exactly operates in a moment. So basically this virus belongs to single stranded RNA virus. Among them there are negatively uh, negative sense RNA virus and there are positive strand so this belongs to negative strand RNA virus this is a printing mistake by the way and it's basically paramyxoviridae family virus and it's called rubula virus family so firstly the nasopharynx is affected by the virus so now here we zoom into a nasopharynx which is basically nasopharynx and the oropharynx at the immediate point of contact after after the virus enters through respiratory droplet so here we are looking at some cells of the upper respiratory tract which gets infected and the virus infects those cells. Eventually viral virus can migrate to several nearby lymph nodes and from that it can also go to the uh, bloodstream causing the viremia. Now let's look at nasopharyngeal epithelial cell to understand the life cycle of this virus. So mumps virus interacts with specific receptors on the cell surface and the fusion protein augments its uh, uh, fusion with the uh, host cell. So the membrane of the virus, fuse, the envelope actually fuses with the membrane of the cell. Then the ribonucleoprotein is released and the RNA which is negative sense gets, uh, get, gets replicated. And this replication happens via intermediate positive sense. This positive sense RNA can actually be basically translated and basically more negative sense RNA can be produced using this as an intermediate. Now this positive strand RNA ultimately give rise to many viral proteins and particles which eventually get transported via the Golgi apparatus and a new virus forms on the surface of the cell which eventually buds out. This is how the mumps virus replication cycle works. Now let's look at the clinical features. So already we talked about the swallowing uh, lymph node and besides the uh, parotid gland, some of the lymph node can also get so swelled when the virus is infecting it. But the pancreas, brain and the testis are the other site of virus infection. So basically, testis could get inflamed and this is known as orchitis. This happens mostly in the postpubertal males. Testicular swelling, usually unilateral uh, inflammation happens and sometimes it might lead to atrophy and rarely it can lead to sterility. So parotitis, which means like parotid gland inflammation, IT stands for inflammation all the time, is a very common symptom in mumps virus infection and often the parotitis is unilateral, sometimes bilateral as well. There is always tenderness and pain in the area which makes it difficult to chew or swallow stuff. Parotid ducts may also be red and swollen. Other complications might involve meningitis that means inflammation of the meninges, encephalitis that means inflammation of the brain parenchyma. Then, uh, then another possibility is oophoritis which is basically inflammation of the ovaries in the female. 
and then there could be pancreatitis and other complications. Diagnosis generally happens by looking at the clinical feature. This kind of unilateral, extremely swollen parotid gland is pretty apparent. Anybody can tell that's basically mums. But also one can confirm the diagnosis using serology because mum specific antibodies would be detected in the patient's blood. PCR based detection is best for any viral infection, be it COVID, be it mums, be it measles, anything. And the treatment basically requires supportive care, isolation of the patient. Uh, antipyretics might be used. Sometimes analgesics can be used to reduce the pain. But overall, hospitalization is not required. Sometimes in severe cases, it might be required. But the prevention is better than cure. Each time, every baby has to be given that MMR vaccine. And this MMR vaccine ensures mumps uh, incidence had gone down dramatically in the global scenario. And the MNR vaccine is basically a mixture of live attenuated viruses, which has three different type of virus, which are all uh, act all inactive but has that component so the immune system would recognize them and mount and response when an original virus attacks the body so i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe see you in the next video please support our channel using super thanks your support is our motivation see you in next video